This is the Dangby Neo Smart Projector. Full HD, 60 Hertz, it's Netflix certified, Amazon Prime TV, and all of your streaming services will be running at 1080p because it does have a Widevine Level 1 cert. It's not running Android TV, so it's Linux-based, the OS, and it's a lot faster than Android TV. Now, it's got built-in speakers, two of them. They're 6 watts each, Dolby Audio. Pretty impressive, the sound of them for the size of it. And we're looking at a DLP projector. So the maximum brightness is 540 ISO lumens. It's got auto keystone correction and auto focus. In the box, you'll find a user manual. We have a support card, power cable, our power supply that is 90 watts, and our remote here. So it's a Linux operating system that it's running. It's not Android TV, but very similar looking remote to that. And you'll see we've got our dedicated buttons there for Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, YouTube, focus volume controls, and that's the power on button there. And there's even a microphone built into it. What's not included is two AAA batteries to power this remote. So our projector here does have auto keystone correction, auto focus using these sensors. Now it's a DLP projector rated for up to 30,000 hours. 540 ISO lumens and it does support HDR10. Now this here at the front is just a grill for ventilation. On the left side, you will find our dual 6 watt speakers, Dolby Audio speakers too, by the way. They sound really good for the size of it, and later on, I will give you a sample of them. On the right, we just have a, another vent here for the cooling, and on the bottom of it, we've got these four solid rubber feet and your typical mounting point. So you could mount it on a tripod, or you could have it set up on a ceiling mount. We have the exhaust vent at the back, which is rather large. If you look inside there, you can see two copper transfer pipes and there are some fins in here. So you will feel a little bit of a breeze coming out the back of this and it's warm because it's cooling the projector, making sure it doesn't overheat. Later on, I will give you a fan sample. So I've got two type A USB 2s right here and then we've got our HDMI input, LAN and then optical audio, good to see this, and DC in for powering it. Then the top of the Dangby Neo, this is plastic, so the whole frame around the outside is plastic. The only thing that's metal is just the mesh, that's uh, a bit of a dust filter there, and we have the power button with status LED. Now setting it up is a little bit different from your typical Android TV projector, because this is an Android TV. This is, of course, running Linux, which is a lot faster. They claim it's about 60% faster response times, audio, everything. It's a lot more lightweight. So here you can see you've got various different European languages. In fact, every single language is pretty much in here, which is great to see. And the menu so far does seem to be really quite fast. So once you get this all set up, you're able to go into this menu here if you're going to be using it on a desk, if you're going to be using it there uh, on a ceiling mount, or you want to have it mirrored, then you can do all of that. You can set those options right up. And this is just the initial setup. I'm quickly just showing you that. If you go through and your region here, you need to set up. So it's got your typical menus you have to go through, and it doesn't take too long to do this. So this is our default menu system here, and it is fast. I do find moving about in this, it does not seem slow at all. So you see that Netflix, that's already pre-installed. Of course, it is fully certified. It's got a wide vine number one cert. YouTube is there, YouTube Kids, Amazon Prime Video, and we do have open browser, Miracast option, you can use that too. App Store, so take a quick look at that. The performance of everything seems to be excellent the way it all loads in. So there's various different apps that we can jump in and grab and install from here. You can see they've got categories up the top there. So you've got stuff there for children, new apps, featured apps, music, video, news, whatnot. It's all up there. And again, the performance is good. It does seem to be faster than Android TV. It's certainly a lot uh, less bloated, I would say. So it's all running off a quad-core chip. It's got a gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. That's eMMC 5.1, the spec of it, which is sufficient enough for these kind of needs. So if you go up the top here into the menu, you've got your inputs. So you can select your USB for external files, HDMI, go back home, 
and we have our settings. So just quickly go through some of this here. So Keystone, you've got that. And for me, just out of the box without having to adjust anything, the Keystone at the moment is looking very good. Now I have a wall that has a matte paint finish to it and it's hand plastered. It's not 100% perfect. So if you see any distortions, it's either that or my lens, which is an ultra wide lens. Now zoom, you can go from 50 to 100%. Now I don't see myself having to use this. I've just got it 100 at the moment. So you can zoom it down if you wanted to do so. But uh, doing that, you reduce the quality a little. So I'll get onto the image quality shortly, but just go through this. So the keystone, that's all there, the zoom, and then focus. Now you can manually do it, but again, I have found autofocus to be really good. I'll show you how long it takes now. So I just press it and you see that it's using the camera to get the focus on that and it takes a few seconds to disappear. In fact, no, that's the manual focus there that I'm running, sorry. So I don't need to tweak that. I'll just run the auto again, and you see it blurs for a second using the little camera it's got there, and it tends to get that focus pretty much spot on. Bluetooth, projection settings, okay? So if you are gonna be using this ceiling mounted, then there's your option. You've got the problems solved of having to invert it around because you just need to go into that menu first before you then mount it. Otherwise, you're gonna have to flip your head around upside down. So network settings, audio, there are different audio modes here. You can adjust the bass, the treble, surround sound, which is, um, of course, emulated. That's not real surround. Sound style, so this is just a few equalizers in there too. Digital output mode, dialogue enhancement, picture modes. So there are a few of these in here. Standard is what I'm using. You've got custom, so the brightness is all the way up to 540 ISO lumens, and you can tweak all of this yourself if you wanted to go through that. Cinema preset, sport, vivid, standard. Doesn't seem to be a gaming mode. Now there is an eye protection mode that you can turn on that's gonna reduce the blue light. If you wanted that, you've got that right there. And lastly, about. So this is where you find Netflix information version info, and they are supposed to have over the air updates too for this particular model. So I've gone over now into Netflix and the performance of Netflix is looking very good. Even with just the one gigabyte of RAM, that's all it needs. Everything is fast, it's smooth here. And again, it feels almost a little bit faster, I think, than the Android TV setups. This is working good. Say I am the best boss. All right, they and you see the playback is pretty much instantaneous there. So what I'll do is just jump quickly into one of these here that I was watching before, and we'll take a look at the performance. To go into the menu, I'll just resume this. I'll show you just a few seconds. Oh wow, look at that. It's already up and running. It did not take long at all. And yes, I can confirm that is definitely running in 1080p, so full HD quality here. And I'm in the YouTube app here and the performance is exactly like Amazon Prime Video, the UI itself, and Netflix, and it's quick. It's very quick and snappy. So I'm gonna go into this video here of mine. This is shot in 4K, but of course we're only gonna be projecting at 1080p max, that's all that it can project. So the quality is looking sharp enough, okay, for 1080p. You do notice at the projected distance, what I have at the moment, I'm looking at an approximate 80, 85 inch image. So you can see that it's not as sharp as the 4K projectors, that is understandable. But even so, this is perfectly watchable and, and I'm really impressed with the quality here. The blacks do not have any speckle to them. There's no grain at all. The optics is excellent. The focus is in focus throughout the whole image. So the edges do not look blurred at all. I'm not seeing any patchy parts there. Contrast, colors all very good so i am really pleased with this image quality i think it's fantastic for a 1080p projector still on youtube now i've gone over to my cat's favorite channel which is birda king and you'll see why because this guy or girl whoever it is they do record some fantastic quality of their images here of squirrels of birds and my cat goes absolutely crazy when she watches this so it's a good test also of the image quality because I really find his 4K just looks great. The saturation, the colors too of the birds. So it looks like a bit of a gloomy day here with this one. We've got a standard looking sparrow, but that image quality is looking indeed 
really sharp, very detailed colors. Great too as well. I shall just skip ahead a little here. See if he moves on to another bird, maybe brighter area. Okay, still the same one, but the sun's out. Really good color. And you saw how long did that take to cache, me skipping ahead with YouTube. Next to nothing. That was really fantastic performance, very fast. So just go into one more clip just to look at those colors. Just skip ahead again. And again, really impressed with how fast that cached in. Very good. So fantastic image performance here for a DLP 1080p projector. And how does it look if you open a window, which is what I've done now. So I've got a lot of sunlight that's streaming in just behind from where I'm recording projecting. And the room's reasonably bright at the moment. So it is a lot harder to see the screen, the details. It does not look anywhere near as good, which is standard for a projector. And it is the 540 ISO lumens, but it's looking like I can still at least use it. I can view the content. It just will not be the best viewing experience. You really do want to use this projector like any projector in a very dim or hopefully completely dark room. And could you game on it? Well, you certainly can. I've got my PlayStation 5 on at the moment. This is Dirt 5. I'll get into some gameplay here, but it's looking all right. Now I can tell the difference going from 4K, which I normally game at on an OLED TV, then to this projector that it, it is a downgrade for me in quality, but it still does not look that bad at all. It's certainly playable here. The screen, the colors, everything just fine. And what about our response time input lag? Well, I'll get onto that now. I'll just go into a game. And this is just fine for gaming. So there's no issues with our input lag here, latency and all that it seems to be just fine for console gaming at this level. So when I turn to the left, that's exactly when it happens when I press it on the controller. There is no like huge input lag delay, nothing like that. So yes, you can use this projector, the Neo, for a little bit of gaming on the side if you wanted to do so. What about the fan noise then? Well, this is probably my biggest complaint of this Neo. It's not that bad, but you do hear it. You certainly hear the fan. It's on all the time, and it's normally at the same constant RPM. Right now, I can feel a little bit of hot air being moved out the back of it, so it's doing a good job of pushing out that heat. So here's a fan sample, and this is exactly what it's like. So if you sit right next to it, you are going to hear it. Then the dual Dolby speakers, six watts each. They're not bad at all for the size of them and considering how small the projector is. The only downside really is that both of the speakers are on the right hand side. So you get no stereo separation with them. But here's a sample of them at 100% volume. Pretty punchy, sound very good for the size of them. The Neo Smart Projector has a great image quality for a DLP projector. I'm happy with the colors, the contrast, the sharpness of the optics. The auto keystone auto focus does work really well. And as I mentioned when I was going through the image quality and setting it up, that I didn't have to go through manual keystone adjustment and tweak it. I didn't have to touch that at all. It was pretty much almost a perfect rectangular size to it. The 16 by 9 aspect ratio there, no tweaking was really necessary. These speakers, as I gave you that sample just before, you heard that it's quite loud, there's a bit of bass, and not bad at all considering just how small this unit is. The menu system, very good. The fact that it runs on Linux, it's definitely a lot faster than Android TV, and I agree with them. They say that it's about up to 60% faster. It certainly feels that way, especially the caching loading in, like Netflix, just as soon as you hit play, it's already there. It's loaded and it's streaming away. And in that, of course, 1080p quality, which I can't say for some other name brand projectors. We have to mess about to try and install Netflix. It's already pre-installed here, Amazon Prime TV, already pre-installed. And some of those others, when you do install it, it's still in standard definition only, which of course this is not. It is 
uh, the proper full HD with the wide vine level one certs. Overall, a great projector for a 1080p unit if you're after one like this. My only real nitpick here is the fan noise. You do hear it. If you're next to it, you're going to hear it. It's a constant fan noise. I've heard quieter. I've also heard louder there. So thank you so much for watching my video here on the Dangby Neo Smart Projector.